Hi, first graders. My name is Ms. Boyle. If you've been watching some of the other videos, you might have seen me. If not, I will tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a reading teacher at John Stanford International School. And I really miss all of my students, as I'm sure you miss all of your teachers and all of your friends and miss being at school. But we will get through this, and we're doing this together, which is super fantastic. I love doing this. So one of the things that I've really been missing about my students, especially first grade students, because you guys are just so good at it, is the stories. I love reading the stories that students write. So my daughter, she's a second grader at Kimball Elementary, and she wrote this story right here, which is a pretty good story. So I've been enjoying reading that, but I'm missing all of your guys' writing too. So I hope you're still writing at home, and I do know for a fact that your teachers would love to see that writing the next time they see you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the reading lesson. So this week, we're going to be reading a book about dinosaurs. So one thing that readers do, and I, you might have been seeing this chart, what good readers do is we wonder, right? So we can start wondering before we even read the book. We can start wondering right now. So I told you we were going to be reading a book about dinosaurs. What are you wondering? Huh. Now, this is the part that gets a little bit silly because I want you to say it out loud. I want you to answer my questions. So if you have a grown-up next to you, you can answer it out loud to your grown-up. I'm sure they would love to hear it. If you've got a brother or sister, even if it's a baby brother or a baby sister, you can tell them the answers to my questions. A pet, cat, or dog, a goldfish, even a stuffed animal, or just an imaginary friend. Make sure that you're saying the answers out loud because we want to have that experience of talking out loud with each other. Even though I cannot see you or hear you, I still want you to do it. All right, so back to wondering. What do we wonder about dinosaurs? Hmm. Go ahead and say it out loud. Do you have some wonderings? I'm wondering how big did they get? And like, I've seen some dinosaur movies. Gee, I wonder if they would really eat humans if we were around. Are they really as mean as some movies make them? These are some things that I'm wondering. I bet you have some really good wonderings too, because I know that you guys are doing a lot of things that good readers do. So we're going to read the book today, and we're gonna wonder about the book. So this is the book that we are reading today, and it is called Velociraptors, When Dinosaurs Lived. And it is written, and I think also illustrated, by Kate Riggs. And look at that great illustration of a velociraptor. So a velociraptor was a type of dinosaur, this type of dinosaur. So you may have heard of velociraptors. You may not have heard about velociraptors. But today, we're going to learn some more. And we're going to continue to wonder because, of course, that's what good readers do. So let's wonder, what are we going to learn about in this book? What, what kind of things are we going to learn about velociraptors? Well, there's one place we can go that's a really great place that tells us what we're going to learn about, and it is the table of contents. So right up here, we have the table of contents, and we can see that we are going to meet, Velo Velo meet Velociraptor. That's chapter one. We're going to read a chapter on Velociraptor life and a chapter on studying a Velociraptor. That's what we're going to do today. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about some of these other things as well as we go throughout the week. So let's go ahead and get started wondering, learning, and reading about Velociraptors. Velociraptor was a theropod dinosaur. It lived from 75 to 70 million years ago. That was a really long time ago. The name Velociraptor means swift thief. Swift means fast thief, like somebody takes something. So they were known to be fast stealers of things. That's what their name means. And here it says, some people think Velociraptors had spots or stripes on its skin. Right there. Oh, and here it tells us, I knew already how to say Velociraptor. That's some of that prior knowledge I already had. But in case you did it, the, uh, the author gives, tells you how to write it. Velociraptor. I think I was saying it right. All right, next page. Velociraptor was a fast-running meat eater. 
It had about 80 sharp teeth. We only have 32. Grown-ups have 32. Kids have 20 something. But uh, 80, 80 is a lot of teeth. It had about 80 sharp teeth and it was always ready to eat prey. It had large eyes on the side of its head like a bird. This helped Velociraptor see all around. So it says Velociraptor ran on two legs and ate prey of all sizes. Oh my gosh, seriously, zoom in on those teeth. Look at those teeth, 80 of those. Those are some sharp teeth. A veloc an adult of Velociraptor weighed only about 33 pounds. So that's probably less than what you weigh, which is, I thought Velociraptors were much bigger, but that's not that big. It stood three to four feet tall. So about how tall you are. Well, probably a little shorter, actually. Or, yeah, I think you guys are probably, you're probably around four feet tall, maybe. Three to four. So they're about your size, and they weigh less than you. Velociraptor used speed to make up for its small size. The predator chased its larger prey at speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. That is fast. That's faster than your car drives, like, when it's on a street. That's, like, freeway speed, almost. Way faster than we can run. So it weighed less than you. It was about the same height as you, but I bet it could run faster than you. It says two huge claws on the back of on the back feet were sharp weapons. All right. So we've learned some information. We've wondered and we've learned some information. Let's see if you can remember it. How did velociraptors catch their prey? Go ahead, say it out loud. Do you remember? Really fast running, right? Really, really fast running. And then really, really sharp, scary teeth, right? Yeah. Oh, and it had those eyes on the side of its head that would help it see all around. Velociraptor lived in dry deserts. There was not much water in the deserts. Velociraptor stayed on the move during the day. It ran quickly over the hot sand with its four-toed feet. So the place where Velociraptor lived is now called the Gobi Desert. So it looks like that now. It probably looked different when Velociraptor was there. But instead, it still was in the desert, and so it ran really fast. Like when you're at the beach, you remember, and the sand's really hot, and you have to run really fast so you don't burn your toes? I guess Velociraptor did that too. The small horned dinosaur, Protoceratops, have to, right, just like you guys, I have to sound out all those parts. Protoceratops was one of Velociraptor's favorite meals. Protoceratops was a plant eater, but Velociraptor also hunted other meat eaters. It ate fast running meat eaters, such as, oh, I've got to sound out some more words, Oviraptor and Gallimimus. Wow, so it ate not just other plant eaters, but it ate other meat eaters too. Look at, the, look at them bite. Quite fierce. What's the caption say? It says, Velociraptors sometimes fought each other over food. Oh, there's the food that they had. It looks like they're fighting each other. Oh, look. I should have looked. Should have looked at the beginning. It had a sounded out part. So I can make sure I was saying those words right. Protoceratops. I think I got that right. Oviraptor. Did I say that? I think I said oviraptor. And Gallinemus. Gallinemus. Got pretty close. All right. Next page. Velociraptor spent most of the time looking for food. Sometimes Velociraptor traveled in packs or groups. Velociraptor died out about 70 million years ago. Five million years later, all the dinosaurs disappeared. So it's been dead for a really long time, which with teeth, like we saw that picture, I guess I'm kind of glad about. And it says Velociraptor packs attacked larger prey like Sarlophus, Sarlophus. Sar they didn't give me a pronunciation on that one, so I did the best I could. Scientists know about Velociraptor because they have studied fossils. Fossils are the remains of living things that died long ago. Many fossils of Velociraptor have been found on the continent of Asia. The first one was found in 1923. It says fossils of Velociraptor relatives called... Oh, the Romeosaurids have also been found. So they had a re they had a relative, right? Like there's like dogs or relatives of each other. Had a, another dinosaur a relative called a Dromaeosaurid. It 
Paleontologists are people who study dinosaurs. Henry Fairfield Osborne was the paleontologist who named Velociraptor. He called it Swift Thief because he thought it stole other dinosaurs' eggs for food. Oh, and there it's telling me paleontologist. Yep, I said that right. It says Velociraptor compared with a five foot tall person. Oh, you can see they weren't really tall. Like it's really only going up, not even, not even up to that guy's waist. And so it seems like Henry Osborne named him because he thought he stole eggs, but uh, so that's why I call him Swift Thief. But it turns out that he uh, ate more than eggs. Oh, here we go. That's a great picture. People used to think that Velociraptor was like a lizard and dragged its tail on the ground. Now people think that it was covered with fuzz or feathers. What? Feathers? It was covered with fuzz or feathers and was more like a bird that does not fly. But scientists still study fossils of Velociraptor. There are more things to learn about this the swift thief. Hmm. So we know some things about Velociraptors, but we don't know all of them. So how did, how did scientists learn about Velociraptors? Do you remember talking about it in this book? Go ahead and tell whoever's next to you. How did scientists learn? Do you remember? Right. The fossils, right? Go back one, nope, two pages. Right, those fossils help teach. But then I noticed, as a good reader, I was really paying attention to some of the details, and they say that they think it was covered with fuzz or feathers. Think, but they don't know. Now, this is a this is a good question. Why don't they know for sure? The information we know about them is from their fossils. Why do we not know for sure if they have feathers or fuzz? Did you get it, right? Because their bones, right, wouldn't tell us about what was on the outside of their skin. So we just think, but we don't know for sure. And you can see here, they they, they added those feathers. It's kind of crazy to think of it being like a giant meat-eating chicken. All right, so oh, here this is, they said people in Japan made a model of a velociraptor with fur in 2008. So here, yeah, they're showing it with fur. That's not even feathers, so that's fur. That's pretty cool. So, we did wondering about dinosaurs and velociraptors before we started reading the book. We wondered while we were reading the book. But good readers don't ever really stop wondering. We can still wonder. So what are you wondering about velociraptors after reading the book? What do you still wonder? Go ahead and turn to whoever's next to you, imaginary or real, and tell them what are you wondering about velociraptors? Did you have some good wonderings? Yeah, I did. Like, I'm wondering how do they know, like how do they know what it's ate? If they, all they have is the bones, how do they know that it ate other, other, um, other meat eaters? How do they know these things? I'm wondering about that. Hmm. We also, of course, did a ton of great learning. What do you think is the coolest thing you learned about velociraptors? I have one in my mind. I want you to get one in your mind. Now say it out loud. What's the coolest thing you learned about velociraptors? Mine is that they had feathers. I think that that's, because um, I'm always used to seeing them more like lizards like that, but now I'm kind of picturing them as like, kind of like ostriches, right? Kind of more feathery, but still very scary. All right, so we are going to look at something else in this book. So we've been talking about, um, about some glossaries. I know that we talked about a glossary one of the other weeks that I was doing this video. And let's talk about what a glossary is. So here is the glossary. So the glossary gives you meanings of the words. And the way it works in this book is if I go to page five, I see this word right here, theropod. And if you notice, it's kind of hard to see, but these words are written in kind of a turquoise and this word is written in black. It's different. 
As a reader, that tells me that this word is special. And theropod is not a word that I'm very familiar with. So I think I don't know that word. And I see that it's in a different color. That tells me that it might be in the glossary. Remember, the glossary is like that little mini dictionary just for the words that are going to appear in that book. And so I'm going to go back to the glossary. And sure enough, I see theropod, a meat-eating dinosaur that walked on two legs. So I didn't know the word theropod. But I saw it was in different writing. Went back to the glossary. Now I know what a theropod is. So that was a great way that that glossary helped me learn more. There's another thing that this book does that helps me learn more. And I read all of them, and they are the captions. So here's this great picture right here. And then here is a caption. There you go. And it's kind of the smaller words. It's not in like the big part of the book. It's smaller, and it's kind of next to a picture. And what the captions do is they tell me what's happening in the picture. So I may not know totally what's happening in this picture, but I see they're eating something. But now I can see that they it is a pack attacking larger prey like a sarlophus. So I was able to know that this is a sarlophus because I read the caption. The captions are the words that help you better understand the pictures. There's lots of other great captions. Let's find another caption. Oh, here, right? Just in case we were wondering if these dinosaurs were dancing together, we can read the caption and see that, no, they definitely were not dancing. Velociraptors sometimes fought each other over food. I'm going to turn to the next page. I want you to see if you can see if there is a caption. Do you see a caption? Go ahead and point to where the caption is. Do you see it? Right there. Right there, that caption helps us better understand the picture. And that's just something that the author of this book did to help us learn more information. All right, so we have done a really great job of wondering. Thank you so much, first graders, for wondering about Velociraptors with me. It is now time to do your independent reading, where you are going to read for 15 minutes. I would love for you to have to read a nonfiction book if you have one, since we've been talking about nonfiction books. But if you don't have a nonfiction book, that's okay too. I want you to think right now about a book that you'll be reading for your independent reading time. Okay, keep that book in mind because I also want you to tell you want to tell you what we'll be doing after you do the independent reading. So after your 15 minutes of independent reading, I want you to go ahead and fill in this sheet right here. So this might have your parents might have printed this out. If your parents didn't print it out, no big deal. A piece of blank paper will work just fine for this too. But let's talk about the parts of this sheet. So it has the title, so you would wanna write the title on your blank piece of paper. And then it says, my book had these text features. Text features are the parts of the book, right? The different features of this text. And my book, it had glossary and captions. So we talked about glossary, that little mini dictionary at the back of the book, and the captions, the words that describe the pictures. So I want you to check if your book had glossary and if your book had a caption. And then the directions, it says, write one thing you have learned and one thing you were wondering about. And then it says, I learned and I wonder. You can write, do that. My book had captions, glossary, I learned, I wonder, same thing. And I wanted to give you an example. This is the one that I did about the book we just read. So I wrote my title of the book, Velociraptors. And the book had glossary, and my book had captions. And I wrote, I learned that velociraptors might have had feathers. I wonder what color the feathers were. Were they like colorful feathers, like a parrot? That's kind of funny to think of it being like this giant meat eater having bright, colorful parrot feathers. So I wrote down my learned and my wondered, just like I want you to do on this or just a blank piece of paper. All right, first graders. That was the lesson. Thank you so very, very, very much for writing, for, uh, for listening and for talking out loud when I ask the questions. Thank you so much in advance for the independent reading that I know that you're gonna do and the writing that you're going to do there. I've really enjoyed this time together, first graders. Don't forget to watch the rest of the videos for this week so that we can learn more about Velociraptors. Till then, bye, take care.